Welcome to the third and final video for truss analysis problem that we see depicted here. In this particular video, we will be solving part C, designing a square structural steel cross section for member AH. A member that we found in the first video to be in compression with a magnitude of 37.12 kips of internal force. Since it is com in compression, we will design this particular member using our knowledge of columns. So we will design for both material failure as well as buckling. First, let's design for material failure. Our starting point, as for all analysis and analyses and design, is actual is less than or equal to the allowable. And in this case, since it's a centric axially loaded member, P over A, or the force divided by the area, is our actual stress, and we'll use the yield stress, since we're told with respect to the elastic strength, and include our factor of safety of 2.0. This is very similar to what we did for member CD, in that it's simply the stress equation and solving for the unknown area. And in this case, it's a square, so we use B squared. Internal force is 37.12 kips divided by the area of B squared. has got to be less than or equal to 36 KSI. The elastic strength of structural steel from table A-17. Divide that by our factor of safety of 2.0. Rearranging the equation to solve for B, we find that B must be greater than or equal to 37.12 kips times the factor of safety of 2.0 divided by the strength of 36 KSI. Therefore, the side of our square must be greater than or equal to 1.43 inches. Sizes are available in quarter inch increments, so we must round up to the nearest quarter inch, which is 1.50 inches. Now we're not done with this design as we were for a tension member. In a column, we have to worry not just about material failure, but also about buckling. And in order to check our buckling, again, the actual must be less than or equal to the allowable. The same starting point as for every other problem, but in this case, we're going to compare the actual load or the actual internal force to the critical buckling load. And we'll divide that critical buckling load by the factor of safety. Remembering that our equation for the critical buckling load is to drive force by Euler is pi squared times the modulus of elasticity times the moment of inertia divided by the effective length squared. Now for a rectangular cross section, we know that the moment of inertia is bh cubed divided by 12. Since we're dealing with a square cross section, b is equal to h. So our equation for our moment of inertia for this problem will be b, b to the fourth divided by 12. So substituting these values, or these equations, excuse me, into this expression, we find that our actual load must be less than or equal to pi squared times the modulus of elasticity times the moment of inertia, which we said is b to the fourth divided by 12, divided by the effective length squared and our factor of safety. Now substituting in values, our actual internal force in this structural member is 37.12 kips. That must be less than or equal to pi squared modulus of elasticity of structural steel, 29,000 KSI. That again comes from table A-17 in your Riley textbook. Times our moment of inertia, p to the fourth divided by 12. The length, the length of member AH, knowing that this dimension from A to B is 10 feet, this dimension from B to H is 10 feet, we can quickly decide or find that the length of member AH is equal to the square root of 10 feet squared plus 10 feet squared using Pythagorean theorem, 14.14 feet. If we convert this to inches, since we've got inches here, and we know that our square is expected to be in units of inches, this will be 169.7 inches. Now our effective length, 
depends on the support conditions or the end conditions of that particular member. For a truss, we assume that all members are connected by pins, frictionless pins. So a member column with pins at both ends, the effective length is equal to the length itself for pin pin. So we can just use the 169.7 inch length as our effective length, square that term, and remember to include our factor of safety of 4.0 for buckling. Rearranging the equation, solving for the unknown value B, we find that it will be equal to the fourth root of 37.12 kips times 169.7 inches squared times 4.0 of our factor of safety. Also the 12 from the denominator of our moment of inertia comes into the expression as well. And then left on the denominator of this expression is pi squared and the modulus of elasticity of structural steel, 29,000 KSI. This then is the fourth root of 179.3 inches to the fourth, which is 3.66 inches. Again, knowing that our members are available only in quarter inch increments, we must round up to the nearest quarter inch, which is three and three quarter inches. Now, if you recall from our calculation for material failure, we found a value of one and a half inches. Well, for buckling, we found a value of 3.75 inches. The larger one will control our design. So this design, four member AH, we will use a 3.75 inch square structural steel member.